Hey, what's happening? Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. All right, let me start right off the beginning. My new segment, Jackass Intervention. I got a new episode ready and raring to go. It's all edited. It's got the thumbnails made up. I was going to download it right here, and I still might. Uh, I looked at the analytics this morning, and uh, it's doing better, better than I ever expected. It's actually surpassed, this isn't saying much, but it surpassed my, my latest political videos. And so I might download it instead of this actual video. Okay, let's just get into this video. What's it about? Uh, let me see this. I think I feel that the country, our country is becoming two split countries. It's headed for being, let's just, let's, let's just play it down and say two separate countries. Uh, ever since Donald Trump and this, this uh, far right, conservative movement um i look at states like florida and texas and i think i would feel more comfortable more at home in england or france or scotland or australia you know what i'm saying i I would feel more comfortable and at ease in another country than i would in some states in the united states in florida and texas why am i saying this all right let me describe this video the link will be down below so you can watch this This is a town meeting, Beto O'Rourke, all right? Now, from what I understand here, he's discussing R.D. Wade. That's the topic he's talking about in these videos you could watch. And a minister shows up, a big, looks like a big guy. He's leaning against the back wall, all right? He says he's a, he doesn't say his name, but he says he's a minister from Hemphill, Texas. And he is strapped to the nines, man. He's got a, let's let's call it a hunting rifle. He's got a, a huge Huge ass hunting rifle hanging off his shoulder, and uh, he's there to talk about RV Wade. He, he's the, check this out. He's, his first question is uh, he wants to ask Beta Rover two questions. Well, one question, then he bases the second question on the first question. Today. So basically, his first question is this: Is uh, uh, are you a born again Christian? Do you take the Lord Jesus as your savior? Let me say this right here. I I consider myself born again. I was raised Catholic, confirmed, all that stuff. Uh, But I do, I do believe in my heart that Jesus is my Savior. I don't want to get all too religious here, but I I do believe that. But I don't believe in, in, you know, if if I catch hell in the afterlife for not pushing my views on other people, because some of these people feel the need to do this. If somebody came up to me and asked me that, which they have before, it aggravates me. It's none of your business what my relationship is to my Lord or God, if I have one. It's, it is none of your business, man. You know, Don't stick your nose in the relationship between me and if I have a God, my God. It's none of your concern. That just that ticks me off. So then Beto O'Rourke says he's Catholic, like me. Same thing, confirmed, uh, confirmation, all that stuff. And he just leaves it at that. And, uh, and that's, the, that's basically the, the interaction. He, the, the, the minister goes on more to talk about, to, to talk about how the latest uh, Supreme Court ruling, R.V. Wade, he says there's a lot of good men that have been products of rape. Uh, he's, and uh, he says that if his wife, if it was a question between his wife and his unborn child, he, he would... No, no question. He would let his wife pass. He'd, he'd kick his wife, pull the plug on his wife. That's what he says. This is a minister now. Okay. I, I don't even know where to start unpacking this. Let me. My, my problem is with this minister, this man of God, who came there to talk about the sanctity of life. Right? Every life is important right from conception. And he's strapped with a giant. Is he there to hunt? I don't think so. Is he there? Is he carrying that uh, in self-defense? No, I don't think so. I think there's one freaking reason he's carrying that, and that's for intimidation. I hate, I can't stand these guys. When I see guys like this, I, I see them occasionally around here, I get the, the overwhelming urge to confront them because they do not want to be confronted. That's what that, that is saying. That has nothing to do with self-defense. It has nothing to do with these incidents that, like an evolved when he shows up at a Beto Roar town meeting talking about God and R.B. Wade, there's one purpose for him carrying that. And that's because he doesn't want to be questioned. He doesn't want any debate. He doesn't want anybody coming up to him, confronting him. He doesn't want any interaction with anybody. He wants, 
his view to go unopposed. That he, you know, this is his God and his view and he is right and don't you dare question me because look at me, look what I'm carrying. That's how I see this. That's how I see all these guys. Uh, you know what, in, in my heart, I believe if something did all of a sudden pop off right there, I, I, I highly doubt that this minister would, would drop down and, you know, take care of business. I, I think he, he'd probably mess it, he'd probably mess himself first. Is, is, that's what I truly believe here. This, it just, it, it aggravates me to no end that people, especially a minister, whatever happens to thou shall not kill. You know, is there exceptions to that? Whatever happened to Jesus turning? I, I remember, you know, I'm no, I'm no minister, but what happened to turning the other cheek? Jesus said something about, you know, if he slaps this side of my face, I'll turn, I'll give him this side. You know, uh, just, you know, total peace and forgiveness. And this man of God is ready to just waste anybody that gets in his way. You know, and on top of that, you can't, you know, like I said, this isn't about anything else but intimidation. You can't tell me that this guy strapped this bat on this in the morning and showed up at that particular meeting without having that particular intention. I guarantee you it was to, to tell people to stand clear of me, back off, don't confront me. I don't want to be confronted. I don't want to debate the subject. I'm right. You're wrong. Accept my view. I'm a minister and I'm packing. That's what I see. You know, like I said, and I don't know why. I don't know if this is some kind of suicide thing with me or whatever, but I get the overwhelming urge to confront these guys when I see people like this uh, in public. Up here, it's not that kind. You know, we don't feel the need to be strapped going to the supermarket or to town meetings. We, we are civilized up here. Um, you know, some people might carry something underneath, tucked away in case something does pop off. But to carry it out like that, to make it so prominent, there's only, there, don't, don't give me, don't give me it. There's no excuse, but it's to intimidate people because you're too much of a big, fat, pussy cat, pussy cat, we'll say that for the algorithms, to have an actual debate or to have anybody actually confront your views. You're too much of a big, that pussy cat. All right, you guys. I will be downloading another Jackass intervention, of which I I I have my Jackass moments, and uh, I'll download this video today. You guys have yourselves a great Tuesday.